1942. America, rising quickly from the crime of Pearl Harbor, answered the challenge to liberty and freedom. Hordes of sleek planes are guarding the skies over our homeland, while countless others are battling a treacherous foe. Mighty floating fortresses are ranging the seven seas, relentlessly hunting down the enemy, and at the same time, watching over the vital supply lanes to our allies. Huge juggernauts of American design and manufacture are rumbling along many foreign terrains in ever-increasing numbers. And far behind the actual battlefronts, another war is being waged. The war of production and still more production. Our armed forces must constantly be supplied and reinforced, necessitating an industrial output many times our normal peacetime capacity. Along both, shipyards are humming with activity day and night. Thousands of new workers have been added to the payrolls. Skilled men to fashion the battleships, destroyers, and submarines that are making our fleet the greatest in the world. Behind the guarded doors of giant plants throughout the country, airplanes of every type and design are being built by the thousands. Sleek fighters, capable of doing over 400 miles an hour. Dive bombers that can swoop down on their prey at a speed of over 600 miles an hour. First, the skeleton of the plane is speedily formed by scores of skilled specialists. Every part must be fitted with microscopic accuracy. While the frame is being assembled, other workmen are building and testing the new powerful motors that will carry the plane into the sky. Equally important to the all-out war effort is production of tanks. These Titans, some of which weigh over 50 tons and contain more than 40,000 specially made parts, are now rolling off the assembly lines at a fantastic rate. Ready to take their place in the fight for freedom. But while tanks and planes and ships are most important, they are but a few of the thousands of varied articles and products necessary for defense. More production means greater supplies of raw materials, materials that come from everywhere. Pig iron to feed blast furnaces, turning out the huge quantities of steel necessary to arms production. Pig iron, copper, aluminum, coal pouring from the caverns of the earth. Rubber for the tires on which roll the modern mechanized army, and for a thousand other uses. Rubber that comes from the plantations of the tropics. Materials from everywhere. Take leather, for example, so important to the production of ammunition belts, bolsters, and gas masks. Where does it come from? Why, from the Western Steer, of course. That's his contribution to national defense. And his cousin, the cow, does her bit, too, by providing the country with the most important factor in personal defense, pure, wholesome milk. For milk with its bone-building calcium and health-building vitamins fortifies the body and makes America strong by making her citizens strong. Young America learns the milk drinking habit early, for their young bodies are constantly using up energy in the variety of activities that make up the day of the typical healthy youngster. Swimming and skating and football are great fun, and the children love them. But they are energy burners, and this energy must be replaced by nourishing foods. That is why smart mothers start their children off right each morning with a brimming glass of milk. For well, they know that no other food supplies as many healthful elements, and what is true for the children is even truer for adults. 
the tension and pace of these nerve-wracking days take a toll of our energies that is potentially dangerous unless we take extra care in the choice of proper food. More and more people are beginning to realize the importance of cream on their cereals and butter on bread topped off with a glass of milk. For breakfast is the meal that sets us up for the rigors of city life, the continuous energy draining effort to keep up with the pace and throb of the city itself. Today, the speed up in our daily activities is greater than ever before. And consequently, we are more in need of a midday pick-me-up. That is why many large department stores have set up milk bars where the tired shopper and the children may pause a moment and replenish their store of energy. That is why milk bars have sprung up everywhere. For wise men and women realize that now is the time for all of us to be at the peak of our productive capacity. And milk at lunchtime supplies the extra pep and vitality that we need to work more efficiently under the increasing tension. For working as they do in towers of concrete and stone, that glass of milk is their only chance to capture the healthful elements that come from broad green fields, bright sunshine, and fresh country air. Here in the peaceful surroundings of the dairy country is Mother Nature's arsenal where she manufactures white ammunition. These cows have nothing to do but graze in the sun all day and sap up the health and vitality of the countryside so that it may be passed on in their milk to the people who are cooped up in the cities. These herds are made up of the finest breeds of dairy cows. This is a Guernsey cow. This type was brought to America in 1818 from the Isle of Guernsey in the English Channel. The Guernsey is a medium-sized cow, golden brown and white, producing a rich milk, yellow and creamy in color. The black and white marking of this cow identified as a Holstein, originally developed in Holland. There are more Holsteins in the United States than any other breed. This large, rugged brown cow is a brown Swiss. The breed was developed in Switzerland and imported to this country after the Civil War in 1869. The Ayrshire cow originated in Scotland. It is reddish brown and white in color and produces a very high quality of milk. This small fawn colored cow is a Jersey, originating on the Isle of Jersey in the English Channel. The Jersey cow produces a small quantity of an exceptionally rich milk. The world's best known cow, Elsip, is a purebred Jersey. After a full day's grazing, the cows are on their way back to their spotless stalls. A far cry from the conditions prevalent in 1851, when Gail Borden was experimenting with milk preservation. At that time, cows were kept in dirty, unhealthful surroundings. Gail Borden realized that cleanliness was of utmost importance in the handling of cows and milk. But although this fact seems obvious to us now, he had to fight farmers tooth and nail to get his views accepted. Today, the things for which he fought have become the standards of the milk business. Cleanliness is the watchword, and everything from the barns and attendants to the cows themselves is under rigid inspection. For milk is more than just a business today, it is a public responsibility. Here, the cows are being fed carefully prepared vitamin-rich silage and grain as a sort of dessert to top off their day in the pasture. Then if she's thirsty, she need only press her mouth into the basin of this automatic fountain right beside her. Now before the cow is ready for milking, she is carefully washed down by attendants who know, as does everyone else in the milk business, that you just can't be too clean where milk is concerned.
then the cow is ready for one of her regular visits by the doctor. No, there's nothing wrong with her. This doctor is one of the staff who is paid to keep cows well. For you can't be sick and have anything to do with milk. After a thorough examination, the doctor then takes a sample of the cow's milk. This he carefully checks for color and flakiness. And if the milk is up to the established high standard, the cow is then ready for the milker. In this modern day, milk production is as highly mechanized and efficient as any other large industry. The cow still makes the milk. But then, modern efficient machinery steps in. These mechanical milkers, for example, are both cleaner and faster than the old milking by hand process, and from the cow's standpoint, far more gentle. The greatest advance in mechanical milk production that has ever been made is undoubtedly the rotolactor. Employing the principle of the assembly line, this large merry-go-round type of machine saves time by bringing the cow to the attendant instead of making it necessary for the attendant to go to each cow. The cow enters at one end of the machine into its own separate enclosure, each complete with a milking machine and a receptacle for the milk. The cows are first thoroughly washed by the attendants. The receptacle too is sterilized with scalding water before it is used. Then as the cows move around, the attendants attach the milking machine. The rotolector affords the utmost in protection for the purity of milk, since the human hand has so little to do with the milking process. The milk leaves the cow and is pumped directly into the sterilized glass containers. A further safeguard is effected by taking the entire machine apart several times each day for a thorough sterilization of every part. At frequent intervals, a large laboratory off the milking room takes samples of the milk for examination. Constant supervision of milk quality assures a uniformly pure product. In five minutes, the milking process is completed. And as each cow steps off the rotolector, another one steps on. While it is undoubtedly the most ingenious, the rotolector is but one of the many important developments designed to provide you with better, purer milk. The milk is then chilled before shipment. In other localities, the milk is brought to large receiving stations by the farmers themselves. They're advised about the sanitary precautions that must be taken, not only in the production of milk, but in the transportation as well. This milk too is carefully tested by trained technicians who sample each and every can of milk that is brought in. The milk is then weighed or farmers are paid by the pound, not by the quart. Meanwhile, the cans and lids are sent through a washing machine where they are thoroughly sterilized. Each farmer picks up only the cans that bear his number, and he keeps them securely sealed until ready for use again. In the laboratory, every known testing device is employed to check the appearance, purity, and quality of the milk. A very careful record is kept of each farmer's product, a sample of which is sent to the laboratory for detailed analysis, from which the amount of money due each farmer is computed. These tests also give the farmer valuable information on cow feeding and diets that will further raise the quality of milk from his farm. Thus, the laboratory serves a twofold purpose. First, by assuring the absolute purity of today's milk, and at the same time, investigating and discovering the means of making tomorrow's milk even finer. After preliminary refrigeration, the milk is then rushed to the city in large stainless steel glass-lined tank trucks, insulated to keep the milk ice cold carrying the freshness and healthfulness of the air and sunshine of the country to the city dweller.
Arriving at the plant in the city, the milk is pasteurized for 30 minutes at a temperature of 143 degrees Fahrenheit as a final guarantee of safety. An automatic graph keeps a constant record of each individual pasteurization tank. Under the health-giving rays of ultraviolet lights, some of the milk is irradiated before pasteurization, and thus important vitamin D is added to the many food elements milk already contains. In the filling room, the bottles come out of the washing machine where they've been thoroughly scoured and sterilized for a period of 22 minutes onto a conveyor that carries them directly to the filling machine. Like an army of glass soldiers, they march up at the rate of 120 every minute to each machine to receive their quota of white ammunition. Powerful defender in the constant fight for better health. As the filled bottles are placed in their cases, watchful attendants again examine them for imperfections and pass on only perfect bottles for delivery. Right, base. These are the twin quart bottles, stepping up for their double helping of white ammunition. One, two, one, two. The pace never slackens, movement never stops. For milk must be rushed from the cow to your table in the shortest possible time. As everywhere in the process of milk production, the laboratory plays an important part. Every step of pasteurization and bottling is carefully watched by scores of skilled technicians utilizing every type of modern testing equipment and laboratory apparatus. It is their observations that make the milk you drink the safest, purest, and most healthful food you can buy. Another method of packaging milk is the single service container. It is manufactured entirely by automatic machines. From start to finish, no hand ever touches it. Once the container is formed, it is coated inside and out with scalding paraffin. The result? A highly personalized container that is used only once. So popular in stores because of the ease of handling and because there is no deposit required. The containers are filled and packed in exactly the same manner as the bottles.
This machine manufactures flake ice, which is used to keep the milk cold while it is being delivered. Refrigeration is essential because milk is a very perishable food and must be protected on every step of its journey. And now the milk is on the home stretch. In their refrigerated trucks, a silent army of milkmen set out in the wee hours of the morning to deliver their bottled milk. Down every street, along every avenue, rolls the Dawn Patrol. We all take the bottle of milk for granted, but very few of us appreciate the long and intricate process that has made it possible to bring the magic fluid from the farm to our doorstep. A process involving selected herds of cattle, scientific farming, constant inspection, laboratory research, modern production machinery, and mechanized transportation. But it is far more important for us to appreciate the fact that milk is the foundation on which to build family meals. For packed into a quart of milk are a lot of essential food values that would be more difficult and far more expensive to secure otherwise. Bottle boxes are furnished by the thousands to families whose milk would otherwise be exposed to the elements. Incidentally, the man who made this box never saw it, for he is one of a shop full of blind men who are kept gainfully employed the year round making these boxes. Not only does milk go to homes, but every morning a huge fleet of these heavy duty, refrigerated wholesale delivery vehicles rolls out of the branches on their way to serve the stores, restaurants, hotels and hospitals of the metropolitan area. milk is a featured item in food stores. In many self-service markets, these visual refrigerators permit a customer to select her own milk, cream, buttermilk, and other dairy products. And today, milk is playing an important part in the training of the greatest armed forces in our history. A famous general once said, the more milk you put into a soldier, the more fight you get out of him. For milk, with its healthful vitamins and mineral elements, builds strong men. And in this time of need, it is strong men who give America its strength.